All right, hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lainey, if you are new here, welcome. So I am at, that's her hair salon. Y'all, I have not been to a salon in almost a decade. So um, I'm pretty excited about this experience. Yes. I found Elaine on Instagram, come on Elaine. <laughs> I okay. found her on Instagram, my good girlfriend um, showed me her work and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I have been needing for my hair. It's been a while since I've gotten a a really good trim and everything so um yeah she's gonna hook me up today y'all yes. so i'm gonna take y'all along with me get a couple clips and um so this is the before yeah I'm this looking is a mess. let me let me show y'all a three 360. <laughs> overall i would say her hair is not in bad shape because she's been already like washing her hair <laughs> weekly and like doing what she needs to do but i think we just need to tweak like a few of her product choices yes. as well as giving her a nice trim because she sometimes puts her hair in a puff like at the end of the week and we don't want her to have a hard time like going into wash day from that so it's really important to get her ends yes in check so yeah. Yeah. i'm excited really important to really saturate and get all your products off as much as you can before you actually trim through your hair. Mm -hmm. Most people do like five second ass water and keep it moving. Right. But it's not it's not enough. You I'm really guilty. have to <laughs> you really have to get as much of it off as you can. Okay. And honestly, we're really privileged to be able to do that because um like I travel and teach around the world and I've realized that we can't just be using that much water right. like, across the globe. But right. if you if you are able to do that. The point of the shampoo is not just to cleanse your hair, but also to get moisture and soothe the hair. So mm. when I say people should wash their hair weekly, it's not because your hair is dirty at the end of the week. It's more so that you can replenish the moisture. So the hair's natural pH is around like a 5.5, and then shampoo, regular like moisturizing shampoos are around a pH of like seven or basically higher than the five right and so that's going to open up the cuticle and allow for water to go inside the hair strand itself and then conditioner has a lower ph than the hair skin so it closes mm. it back down okay. so without that opening and closing of the cuticle you haven't really put water in the actual hair strand you can spray bottle your hair all you like but it's not really affecting the innermost part of the hair strand. Okay. So that's really why it's important to shampoo and condition your hair and why the the shampoo we choose matters. So if you use a lot of things that are building up on the hair, if you use a low pH shampoo, it's not really getting it all off. Okay. So a clarifying shampoo usually has a super high pH. Right. The one that we're gonna use today is Malibu Undo Goo. And you can actually see on here that it has a pH above nine. Mm. So that's pretty high. You don't want to use something like that all the time. Right. Like things that are above nine are like color and like things that are like harsh. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give us like a super clean slate and we won't use it again until you come back like in, a, in like three months. Okay. Right now. Yeah. So, um, other good clarifying shampoos, that's more of a professional brand, but mm -hmm. if you're at home, you can use something like the Olaplex. Okay, I've seen um, that before. 4C, that's, that's a good clarifying shampoo. Okay. But again, you don't want to overuse clarifying shampoos, especially if you're using like good products. Mm -hmm. You do want to clarify often if you're like, like I said, using Eco Styler a lot mm -hmm. or a lot of like thick leave-ins and creams, right. stuff like that, you do want to clarify more often. I want to get both the hair strand and the scalp. So right now I'm just making sure we are smoothing it all in from roots to ends. Mm. And that's already going to start to pre-detangle the hair too. So once we get to the detangling, it's going to be very smooth. Right, okay. Yeah. So especially for high density folks like you, you really do want to like open up the hair and actually get the shampoo right. on the scalp. So it's kind of like greasing your scalp with shampoo. Okay. So you want to split, and if you're working in sections, that can also help to to help you stay track of which parts you've done, which parts you haven't done. So I'm considered high density. I would say so. Yeah, okay. I would say you're high density. We'll do a true assessment of your hair, like after it's clean. It's hard to assess hair when there's stuff on it. Right. And add some water. Mm -hmm. So anytime you're 
shampooing your hair, you want to make sure that you're not retangling the hair. So I'm focusing just on her scalp and going like this to try to make sure I'm not moving the hair out here too much. Okay. The more sections, the more time you're spending. Mm -hmm. So at home, you can hold your section out and use your other hand to get your scalp so mm -hmm. you're not retangling the hair. Some people have like water filters at home um, to like combat that. But in the salon, what we do is hard water treatment. So it's the same brand again, Malibu, and this is their hard water treatment. Okay. So it's not something you want to do on your hair all the time because it is a high pH as well. Mm. So I will only be using this on you when you come for your maintenance. So like put it in my hand first oh. and then add the water to it to make it foam up like a shampoo. Mm -hmm. So after this, we'll do like a normal moisturizing shampoo just to bring everything back to normal because your hair is going to be like super squeaky clean after okay. this. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing that scares people about clarifying shampoos is that squeaky clean feeling. Mm -hmm. But mind you, a clarifying shampoo is not supposed to feel like a moisturizing shampoo. Right. The point of it is to strip the hair. So that's why we're not doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. Were you born and raised in North Carolina? or? Definitely. No, I was born and raised in Ghana, so oh. I the majority of my family is there, but my immediate family is in the U.S. in oh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, so I that's what made me start Tycro Nation. So Tycro Nation is my other brand, which is me traveling to different African diaspora countries mm -hmm. to spread the message of tight curls basically because so many of us feel like oh my hair is 4c i can't do that mm -hmm. etc and i really want to like dispel that myth that 4c hair has to be hard and difficult and have all these negative connotations to it oh i love that and so i did my first trip last year to ghana and taught at um, about five salons there and then this year i went to nigeria which was really mm -hmm. awesome and worked with about five salons there as well. Oh, that is and awesome. in January, we're going to Kenya. Oh, so I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes. And people just are eating it up because it's just, it's encouraging to know that like your hair doesn't have to be a chore and you can right. actually wear it out. Like your hair itself is the hairstyle. Like some people feel like, just wearing your natural hair out is not a hairstyle. Right. So I'm focusing this on her hair strand itself. This one is like um, a hair itself treatment. So you don't really need to like be putting it on your scalp like that. Okay, everything I'm doing for her hair right now is according to, to her hair. hair. So Absolutely. like if you do want like more one-on-one personal advice to your hair and your climate and where you live, mm -hmm. um, I would love for y'all to join my online course awesome. where I teach you how to do that. Yes, please. But hopefully you can get some nuggets from this. So another thing I want you guys to know about porosity is that we've been a little misinformed about what it means. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, it does refer to how your hair is responding to moisture, but a lot of the times we created our own porosity issues. Like nobody, most people, and I'm not gonna say nobody, most people are not born with hair that is resistant to water. Like, usually we, we did something to make it do that. Mm. And so some of the things that cause low porosity hair is not clarifying enough. We're using products that repel water most of the time. So most of the people who are doing the LOC method are probably identified as being low porosity because um, not saying that the method is like not great, but it's it's not necessary. Let me okay. say that. Yeah, there's different. There are other ways you can lock moisture into the hair. Gotcha. So it, that's one technique, but I it makes me sad that that's the most popular technique mm -hmm. because most people don't own a shampoo that is able to remove the cream and oil that they put on top. So it ends up creating so many layers that like a regular shampoo can't cut through basically. Okay. Yeah. So my main message is use whatever you want, but like understand what kind of shampoo can remove those ingredients. Gotcha. Yeah.
Hope you guys are enjoying the video so far and soaking up the knowledge that Miss Elaine is giving us about natural hair care. If you're in Jacksonville, Florida or surrounding areas, please visit Elaine at Yes Her Hair Salon. You guys will not be disappointed. Not only will you get your hair done, but you will get educated on natural hair care as well. Please also visit her on her Instagram. You can see a lot of her work there and that's what hooked me. <laughs> it made me want to come visit her because she does a great job. Also, if you want to learn about her mission to help naturals worldwide, please visit www.tightcurlnation.com. This is like a salon science, but okay. <laughs> it's the Innersense mm. Hydrating Hair Bath Shampoo. I like Innersense as a brand because most of their ingredients are plant-based. Mm. And the reason I like to use plant-based products is because plants and water like each other. So most of the ingredients are desert plants, things like aloe vera, maybe chamomile, mm -hmm. agave, like things that can't survive without water. Um, and they live in a dry climate in the desert. So once they get water, maybe from rain or something, like they're able to hold that water for a long time mm -hmm. so they can survive. So when you put it on your hair, it's holding in that moisture for a long amount of time too, because that's just the nature of the ingredient. So it's, that's another way you can like lock moisture into your hair than using like something oily or creamy. So now I'm gonna go in with the Trepidora Quinoa Repair Deep Conditioner. So this is a plant-based deep conditioner. Okay. Um, like I said, you don't have to deep condition every week, but I just stripped your hair to the core, so we need to replenish. And so, I like to mix different conditioners just to get like a certain lather to it. So usually plant-based conditioners are going to lather up like a shampoo basically. So okay. that's how you would know that you're using a high quality concentrated conditioner is that's what we put under her hair and we add water. It's going to foam up. We're putting the conditioner in her hair. I'm adding water as I'm putting it on. focusing more so on the hair strand. So conditioner is not really for the scalp, but I do try to get like the whole hair strand. Mm -hmm. So think of your hair in sections. Let me get a clip. Like I said, the less sections, the better, because then it cuts down your time. Mm -hmm. And also conditioning is a verb, not aesthetic thing mm -hmm. it's about what you're doing to the hair so oh, it's better to be doing something while the conditioner is on your hair rather than just be sitting under some under a source of heat okay. like the friction from your hands like working it in is enough mm. um and we're actually like smoothing the cuticle back down so always remember conditioning is a verb it's more about what you're doing than sitting static sure. so you can see how the conditioner is foaming up right now. I'm gonna hand you a mirror so you can see too. So you wanna look for conditioners that have the word extract a lot in the ingredients. Okay. So I'm starting at the ends. This is the Felicia Leatherwood brush. So it does move around too, but not as much as the easy detangler that she has at home. Right. So we want something that's going to keep the length of the hair when you use it instead of shrinking the hair back up. So people who are using like a Demon brush, you'll notice when you brush your hair, it springs right back mm -hmm. up. We want to keep the hair elongated so your wash and go will be elongated too. Oh, okay. So this brush works really well vertically at the ends and then you can switch it up to horizontal going up to the roots. It's made specifically for curls. So as you can see, like we're not really getting a lot of hair in the brush at all. So start at your ends, go towards the roots. And it is a plastic brush, that's why you hear that noise, but it's literally not removing it's any not hair snagging. yet. <laughs> it's not snagging. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And this conditioner has a lot of slip. Very, a lot of slip. So it doesn't have slip till I added the water. So mm -hmm. adding water to your conditioner is like very important. So I always want you guys to put your 
um, first product on in the shower on soaking wet hair. So no matter what that is, if it's a leave-in, if it's like a gel, etc. I don't want you to use a towel on your head ever again, unless you're gonna like be blow drying it or something, then you do want to remove some moisture. So you don't use too much heat to remove the water. But we are trying to lock in the water. The water is the moisturizer, okay? So don't get it twisted. Yes, we use products, but the product is not what's moisturizing the hair, it's the water. A good product is going to stop the water from escaping the hair too quickly, mm. basically. So if you're using a really good leave-in, once you put it on your hair, it should have slowed down the dripping of the water or completely made it stop dripping completely. So because her hair is coarse, as in thick hair strands, I'm going to go in with the Kinky Curly, not today leave-in, um, but typically on most people I would be using like the Uncle Funky's Curly Magic, which is also another good base product. You can also do really well with this as well, okay. but um, for coarse hair clients, I found this to be the best. Okay. So. Both of these in, um, products have pretty much similar ingredients. It's just water, you got some plants in there like aloe vera, um, marshmallow root, mm -hmm. um, chamomile, nettle, horsetail, a lot of things that say extract in it. So we're going to take, I'll read what I'm doing since I was talking. So first we're just gonna go mid strands to ends first and then we'll do like the roots. Okay. And I'm just gonna split her hair and smooth it in. So our first product is just to lock in the moisture. Okay, so this is just to hold that in and then our second product is going to be for the hold. And then humixers not only hold in water, they can accept more moisture too. So this is a step where we're really like soaking the hair in water. This is to also give it, you're watching it like more elongation as well. Mm -hmm. The more moisture that's in there, the better. So that's our base product, the Kinky Curly or Uncle Funkies or Moose, whatever you want it to be. The different things you use will give you different results though. Yeah, mousse is gonna give you more volume, mm -hmm. but it will be a soft hold, so it might not last that long. So the thing we're gonna use on top is the Innersense Agree Hold Gel. So this is the one that I said has a nice thickness to it. So I'm gonna go with two pumps of that for hold. So the reason I prefer this to Eco Styler is the ingredients, even though they have a similar thickness to it. The ingredients of this are mostly plant-based and they can wash off with like a normal shampoo. Okay. So you don't have to clarify your hair all the time. When we're applying products, we want to do a lot more smoothing than raking. Oh. Raking is a styling technique. Smoothing is the product application. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right now we're at the styling stage. So we are going in was that vertical mm -hmm. sections because I don't want to use clips to keep clipping her hair away okay. if I went like this way. So I'm taking my slices this way and then I'm smoothing it in. Notice how I haven't really raked much. I'm smoothing it in and because of all that smoothing, I can see where her curls are separating already. Right. So I'm just kind of going with the flow with where it wants to oh, separate. Wow. Yeah. So don't be afraid of clumps if you're gonna dry it under a bit of dryer, which we are. Um, if you're air drying, which I don't really recommend, but if you have to, um, it's better to do like smaller separation so that the air can have room to pass. Okay. But put a dryer is always better, truly, for longevity. I'm purposes. learning that, yeah. yeah. So this is how my hair is looking after Elaine was done styling. Y'all, my hair felt so light. 
Like it literally felt like nothing was on my hair. It was crazy. I sat under the hooded dryer for approximately 30 minutes and then she took a handheld dryer to dry certain parts of my roots that were still wet. Next came the trim and you guys, I needed a professional trim. I would trim my hair every now and again at home, but I needed a professional in my head to trim it properly. So instead of the traditional way of, you know, blow drying and straightening the hair and then, you know, trimming it off that way, Miss Elaine cuts the hair curly, you guys. So I wear my hair curly 95% of the time anyway. I don't straighten my hair. So it just made sense for her to cut my hair uh, while it was in its natural state just to get those ends off i'm trying to grow my hair out so i kind of chickened out on getting like an actual cut to shape my hair so i just opted for her to trim as much as needed and as you can see she's going curl by curl taking her time which i so appreciated you guys i appreciate it. this whole experience was just awesome So this is how my hair is looking after the trim and my ends are looking really, really good. She did say she was a little heavy handed with product on certain spots. With a little shine mist, it went away with no problem. I didn't have any flaking or anything like that. I also purchased some products from her so I can recreate these wash and goes at home. So let me know in the comments below if you would like a video of me demonstrating using these products. I hope you guys enjoyed this very educational hair care video. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. If you did enjoy it, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And yes, I was feeling myself on my date. <laughs> Thanks, Elaine. My hair was perfect. I love y'all. I thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one. Until then, bye.